Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. In this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. God is our refuge and our strength. A very present yeah. I have to salute. so good in the birthday scene. Absolute, she loves me down to the root. Say my name three times, but we're not big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stands by you. Through the thick and the fear, I stand by you. Yeah. Believe a mic, go hard to the new. She got me locked up in a boot. The way I'm on average. Kind of girl that is made up for marriage. When we don't talk, it's the same language. I see you with food in a carriage. Be hungry, give me nudge, nothing. Tips. 
we're still very much in the COVID pandemic, as we will realize. We have heard that it's on the rise. So we don't have any definite restrictions here at the moment, but we ask everyone just to be sensible about it as far as possible. If you want to wear your mask, you can wear it and just be distanced as much as possible. The restrooms, there's one as soon as you came inside the church on my right, your left. Or if that one is occupied, the hall next door has two and they belong to the church. But there's a nursery in session there, so you'll have to ring the bell and one of the attendants there will show you to the washrooms and allow you to use them. Lastly, we do not expect any fire here in the house of God, so we feel that we're protected by God. Amen? Amen. But just in case that there is a fire, if you can go through that door that you came in and go on the other side of the road as far as possible from the church until it is safe to return, that will be much appreciated and in the interest of the safety of all of us. Let us just be quiet as we prepare to worship God. Sisters and brothers in Christ, we have gathered in this moment to worship God. As we celebrate the life of our beloved brother, Eric. As we pray our last respects, undoubtedly we will express sorrow that the life of a loved one is physically ended. But more importantly, we're here to give the God thanks for a life well lived. We may even be grieving that the life of a loved one is over, but also rejoicing that in Christ eternal life has begun. We are here conscious of separation, yet confident that in Christ we shall meet again. We are here remembering what has been, but also looking forward to what shall be. We are here to pay tribute to all that Eric means to us, and to remind ourselves of all that he means to Almighty God. We're here to entrust someone that we greatly love to God's eternal keeping and to entrust ourselves to the same God who so greatly loves us. The Bible reminds us that in the midst of life there is death. But we are sure that in the presence of death, Christ offers us sure ground for hope and confidence even joy, because he shared our human life and death and was raised triumphant and lives forevermore. In him, his people find eternal life. Let us therefore listen to the words of tribute, words of scripture. Let us bring our pain, our shock, our sadness. Let us offer to God this time of worship and receive the comfort he longs to give us. In the name of Christ. Amen. We understand as we are able to and we will do it according to the printed booklet and we will sing our first hymn. When I survey the wonders of God.
see to the leather spray. Let us pray as we bring our prayers before God's throne of grace. Almighty and eternal God, creator and sustainer of our life, Father, we bless you, we praise you, we give honor and glory to your holy and matchless name. We praise you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. For your grace, your mercy, your faithfulness, your love and favor that you have bestowed on us. Gracious God, you have blessed us in so much. Loving God, in the sadness of this situation, we, your people, come to you. You who are our comforter, our refuge and strength, a helper close at hand, in times of trouble, sorrow, grief, loss, distress, even in this time of bereavement. God of grace, you who sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light, most humbly and heartily we give thanks that by Christ's death he destroyed the power of death. And by his glorious resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Grant us most assuredly to know that because Christ lives, we shall live also. That neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come shall be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Gracious God. You who have brought us to birth, help us to live as a people who are prepared for death. Enable us, we pray, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may hear your word, that our fear may be dispelled, our loneliness is, and our hope reawakened. May our hearts be open to hear your message of death overcome and life renewed. May your Holy Spirit lift us above our present sorrow to the peace and light of your constant love that as we face the mystery of death, most assuredly, we may see the light of eternity through Christ, our risen Savior. Amen. Amen. We set together the prayer that Jesus himself taught the Lord's Prayer. All God. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. I just had a gentle reminder that I forgot to inform you. Can we turn the mobile phones off or down so that we may proceed uninterrupted, please? Thank you. We're going to look to the Word of God, and our first scripture reading comes to us from Psalm 39, reading verse. 3 to 7, Psalm 39, reading verse 3 to 7, by Isis, the niece. My heart was hot within me, while I was musing the fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue, Lord, make me known, make me known my end. And what is this measure of my days? They, that I may know how frail I am. Indeed, you have made my days a shiny breath, and my age is nothing before you. Certainly, every man at, at his best state is but vapor, Sarah. Surely, every man walks about like a shadow. Surely, the busy them, they busy themselves in vain. 
He heaps up the riches and does not know who will gather them. And now, Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. Thank you very much for sharing that word of God with us. At this time, we're going to listen to some tributes, and the first one is from Colin, and it's well, followed by Darren, the cousin, then Daniel, the youngest brother, and Stephen, the stepbrother, in that order. And we have the tributes. such a great person and character. There's just not enough words to sum him up, to be honest, and not enough time, but I'll try my best very quickly. Um, as a person, found him hilarious at times, just always had us in stitches. Funny. Anyone he met, anyone he met, he always had some kind of, um, left a footprint on them in a good way. Um, uh, he had an infectious laugh. Um, I can still hear it now, he's probably laughing at me as we're speaking. Um, and then to come into that, he was a wind-up merchant as well. So if he got you round up, you would hear that infectious laugh even more. Um, he was honest. Um, he'd tell you the truth if you asked. Uh, even if it was hard for you to hear at times, he will tell you the truth. Um, at the same time, he was caring, kind, considerate, generous, cheeky, clever, very clever at times, too clever for his own goods, wound me up. Um, thoughtful, um, had objectivity, came wise as he got older, gave good advice to a lot of people. Uh, he had high standards, always from his designer labels to his cars to the love of his life, an amazing fiance, Armani. He always strived for top class, or when he said he was impressed with you or impressed with something, you felt good about yourself because you knew it was high praise coming from him. Um, Leamington Spa, we all went to Leamington Spa when we were younger and um, lived with our foster mom and dad and sister. Um, it was there he was introduced to the other love of his life, Aston Villa. So, through thick and thin, if he was here to tell you through thick and thin, from school, living in Tottenham, it was a problem. We got it from all angles, but <laughs> he was there, he stayed loyal to Paul and our team. Um, when he came back from Limington Spa, wherever I went, I had to take him. So, I've got fond memories of playing football around the farm, in the blocks, at the wreck, with lots of friends for hours through the school holidays, and it was just. Just that's just what it was, meeting people along the way. He was talented. Not only was he a very good MC, and he loved his music. He had a very good music collection as vast. Um, he was good at most things that he tried at hand. He was a good footballer. He was great on the PlayStation, couldn't beat him at Bumble Games. Okay. Um, he was excellent at selecting his fantasy football. Um, but he had extensive knowledge of football and players in most of the top leagues and at times I thought he was some kind of secret scout. It was just ridiculous, the players he was coming out with, nobody heard of them, but then you'd see them in fruition and think, oh, okay. Eric and Mom at times were also very funny. The amount of arguments and quarrels just had us in stitches at times, it was funny. Mom would play mate for something, Eric would be like, why me? Why, why wasn't Daniel or Colin? And other times it would be like, yes, I did it, yes, it was me, look, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, and that kind of behaviour led Mom to famously say one day, you are the black goat of the family. <laughs> <laughs> Mom obviously meant the black sheep of the family, but that was, uh, we were on the floor by that point, it was too late. Finishing off then, um, 
he's left us with indelible footprints in our minds and our hearts with such good memories of the person that he was um, always left an impression the the tribute page which, which is up um, testament to it some of the words that people put down it's just it's it's just too nice it's so nice um, so he was truly unique he leaves us with a massive void in our hearts um, thanks for listening um, you'll probably tell me no you need to read that again loud say with your chest yeah. thanks very much Thanks to everybody for coming today. Not to mourn the life of Eric, but to celebrate it. Uh, this is someone who was humble, kind, real, and sometimes very opinionated. Um, but one, one thing's for sure, um, if he was close to him, you know, he loved, and he loved very hard. Um, everyone I'm sure will remember his infamous belly laugh, um, which sounded like he was crying. Uh, his loudness and his debates. And if he was ever in a debate with Eric, even if he was right, he was wrong. I'll never forget the days. two kids so they're in trouble as well. Um, yeah Eric was he's just every time I needed guidance I went Eric was the first person I phone up like if it was if it was um, moving house he'll come with me see if it's good if it was getting a car like he'll come with me he might he don't know how to fix them but he'll come with me make sure it's good um, even if it was to get a new girlfriend or anything, he'll be there just to approve for us, that's it, it's a problem. Um, so yeah, Eric was just, 
Everything was just my inspiration in everything, really. So, um, yeah, there was actually there was a funny story about him winding up somebody at work, which, which I found like hilarious because um, he basically there was a person at work. I'm not sure how many people from Eric's workplace are here. Is there any show of hands out there? Hello, hello. <laughs> yeah. So um, you may know this story, and that like, person may be here. But there was a time when um, Eric told me that there's a person that really liked Star Wars. <laughs> and because um, per he knows the person likes Star Wars, Eric just made up any accusation to say Aslan from Land of the Witch and the Wardrobe. I don't know. <laughs> like Narnia. Eric was like, yeah, Aslan will beat up Darth Vader. <laughs> and because the guy knew like, hey, what are you talking about? And he was very emotional about it because he loves Star Wars. And uh, apparently he had the office laughing for the whole day because he just kept saying, Aslan will beat up Darth Vader. He knew what that happened, <laughs> but he just knew that was his weakness. So he's going to wind you up. <laughs> and he just did it until you get that out of you. Like, Eric used to call me chicken. Not scared chicken, but an actual chicken. <laughs> I don't know where we got it from. But it had Stephen in stitches, where, yeah, you. <laughs> and that was it. He ran with it for years. And until I built up an immunity to it, he kept running it. <laughs> like, he just kept cussing me for a long time. But um, yeah, on a final note, because as I said, it's freestyle, um, I just wanted to say that Eric touched everybody here. And he did that as a man. So imagine what you can do as a free spirit. Hi everyone. Today brings a finality I didn't really want to acknowledge since the days that Colin phoned me and told me. You know, I still expect to pick up my phone, hear Eric's voice. Usually to wind me up about Spurs. Being a Spurs fan in the house of Aston Villa fans is not fun. <laughs> Being a Spurs fan full stop's not fun, but that's a different story. The irrational part of my mind still expects to see him come in, say hi, or hear him do his laugh. But I know he's not going to do any of those things, and it is time for me to acknowledge that he's not here. Not be able to hear him speak, to hear that honest, no-nonsense, blunt answer that when you ask him a question and he looks at you like you're stupid <laughs> and then tells you an answer. I'm just going to miss his big heart that is filled with love, miss those conversations that we used to have when we were younger, and his intelligence and insightfulness. My fondest memories of Eric are when we be first became brothers. Colin and I were about mid-teens. Eric was just starting secondary school, and Daniel, he was just young. So we'd sit together for hours, and I do mean hours, playing championship manager. So for those of you who know, it takes up a lot of your time. And we were competitive. And being the newbie in the family, I think Eric was thought, I've got someone else to wind up. So he'd sit there and he'd watch me, and he'd just, take note of all the things that upset me, or didn't upset me, and then he'd just come out with, you didn't want to do that, did you? I wouldn't buy any rubbish. Your team isn't very good. <laughs> and then we'd go head to head in games, and you know, I'd try and win, but I think that was probably the first few times that I even started playing that game, and he would usually beat me, and then it would start. And he'd just laugh at my face. And then Dan would chip in and go, oh, Steve, I can't believe you lost to Eric. Oh. And I'd have to sit there and take it. Because he's 11, I'm 16. You know, I've just got to suck it in. Those nights were long. <laughs> but I learned, I got better, and I made sure it didn't happen too often. And then when Jackie used to come, we'd have to diet it down because there's too much testosterone in the house. You know, we just sit and chuckle and make jokes. But looking back, it was during those years that I mean, 
it was the beginnings to see the man that he would become today. I hope those times were close and truly wish we could share more times like that. As we got older, like see, I went off to university, but I never came back home to Tottenham. And I didn't really spend as much time with my brothers as I would have liked. But when we got together, it was like we were back in Abra. Laughing, joking. And Eric would usually wind me up, normally about Spurs, and then he would laugh. But it was quality time that we had with each other, and I always thought we would have time. More time to talk, more time to laugh together, more time to be brothers. But I know that isn't going to happen, and today I must accept that. But while we don't have that physical time anymore, I will always remember and share with others the times we did have. Eric, you not being here breaks my heart. And I wish you rest in peace, my brother. Thank you all for sharing the life and times and your fond memories of Eric with us. We've been sitting for a while, so we're going to break the monotony and we're going to stand and sing the hymn, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace.
sell me after five. So this is what you stand with in the foyer. I wish you had the seats and you know my sitting at the front beside me. These seats are open. So please come and sit if you so desire. We are going to have two scripture readings. So the first one is from John chapter 11. Thank you. 21 to 27, read by Sister Jackie. We just give the people a chance so that they can see. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know whatever, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, through he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are Christ, the Son of God who has come into the world. Okay, we will have a third reading by Jada, the niece, and it's from Romans chapter 14, 7 to 8. Good morning, church. For none of us live to himself, and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or we die, we are the Lord's. Thank you very much, Jada. As we prepare to reflect on God's word, we will sing our next hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excel.
First of all, on behalf of the officers and members of the Miller Memorial Methodist Church, we express, and on my own behalf, I express words of condolences to Sister Vida and Pastor Kanka. John chapter 11 verses 21 to 27 just to remind us said, now Martha said to Jesus Lord if you had been here my brother would not have died but even now I know whatever you ask of God he will give you Jesus said to her your brother will rise again I'm saying that to the family today. Your son, your brother will rise again. Amen. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection of the life. He who believes in me, even though he may die, he shall live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is come to the world. Just to put this passage of scripture in context, is that Jesus was a personal friend of Mary and Martha. The Bible tells us that he went to the house on several occasions. He ate, he dined, he spoke, he taught them. He was like an extended family member. So therefore he was a friend of Lazarus to the brother that died. And when Lazarus took sick, the sister so believed in Jesus that they sent for him. And the Bible said, or tells us, that for four days, Jesus did not show. And we can understand the tone of the passage when he actually or eventually turned up. And Mary, his dear friend, said to him, Well, Lord, if you were here, my brother would not have died. We can't take that, that line of scripture, I mean, easily, because I believe she said it with an attitude. You know how we are when we have an attitude. Listen, man, you eat our food, you diet and you wine and you dine with us. 
if you had come when we had called you, our brother would still be alive. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Death. The passing of a loved one. In such a situation like this, words can be insufficient to express one's feeling. Because that brings with it the sense of loss, the sense of separation, sorrow, grief, among other things. And the death of a loved one brings a sense of helplessness. You know, as human beings, we are very clever, we are very smart. And there are lots of things that life throws at us. And we always seem to find a way to circumvent these situations. We always find a way around them. But when death comes to us, when death comes to a loved one, even to us as individuals, it renders us helpless because there's nothing we can do. So it brings the self, the, the feeling of helplessness. And especially when someone dies at a young age, it leaves that sense of unfinished business. It leaves us thinking, oh, I wanted to do more. I wish I could have done more. Was there anything else that I can do? Even when there is nothing that we can do. So death of a loved one leaves us with that turmoil of emotions. Wondering, what if I have done this? What if I have said this? And sometimes there's nothing we can do. But that is something that is difficult to accept. It can bring with it feelings of unfairness that we are not able to comprehend. Well, one of the thoughts I had when I heard about Eric's death and his age, I thought to myself, why should a parent, is it fair, is it fair for a parent to bury his or her child? If you look at life from a logical point of view, that's not the way it's supposed to be. I'm not supposed to be burying my kids. They're supposed to bury me. It's their responsibility. But do we have a say? Do we have any control? Yet we seem not to be able to understand what God does. But my brothers and sisters, I want to say to us that death as we know it is inevitable. But even with that knowledge, it still remains a mystery that as human beings, we are still struggling to understand death. What sense does that death make? But I further want to say to us that death cannot be understood from a human standpoint. Especially at times, I mean times like this when it seems to defy logic. In this instance, it highlights the perceived unfairness of life. And I use the term that's in my mind, gone too soon. But the good news is that in such a dire situation, the words of scripture can be instructive and informative, even consolatory, and it can help us in our effort to make sense of in this difficult, dire situation. In Psalm 37, verse 3 to 7, the first psalm that we, we read, the first scripture reading that was presented, David agonized as he tried to understand the meaning of life. As he realized that it is, that the scripture is a good starting point. If we want to understand death, we have to understand life. Because it is in understanding of life that we are able to comprehend what death does for us. Let me just explain that. If I understand death to be the end of me. As we say when you're dead, you're done. 
If, if I was to embrace that concept, it means that I can live anywhere, anywhere I want. I can do what I please because I know one day I'm going to die and that's the end of it. But when we understand from scripture, when we believe and embrace the fact that the Bible says it's appointed unto each and every one of us wants to die and after death there is the judgment. It brings that awareness that if we are going to be standing before the throne of God to give an account of our lives, we have to be careful and be sensible about how we live. And David in that silence agonized the need to understand life. And he noticed three things about life. One, he noticed the transience of life. That life was fleeting. Fleeting. You could be here, you could be strong, you may not even be sick, and yet you could be gone in the next minute. In a sense, he recognized the impermanence of life. That life is not permanent. We are here for a while, so we need to make the best of the time that we are here in accordance with God's words, his principle, and his purpose for our lives while we are here because life is fleeting. He says, look at people, they go around trying to make themselves busy heaping up things. And in actual fact, he's saying in a little while they are gone and they don't even know who's going to get what they were busy heaping up. We need to get our priorities in life right. Look at the word of God and see what God most requires of us. Secondly, he recognized the brevity of life. The brevity of human life, that all human life is short. And my brothers and sisters, he was writing at a time when people were living for us seven hundred years. And later on he wrote that the fact that God has given us three score and ten, which is seventy. And by reason of strength, we can go on and look to the earth in the reach his 50th birthday. Life will be short and getting short. Some people born and they don't even live a day. Life is short. And thirdly, he recognized the importance of getting his priority in life in the right order. He said, listen Lord, I have lived. And this is a man who had it all. He said, I have lived. I have done things. I have been to and fro. But at the end of my, coming close to the end of my life, what do I hope for? I understand that my hope is in you. The Bible tells us, only what's done for God will last. Amen. Amen. So we have to get our lives in order. But what do we do in the meantime we are alive? It seems as if life throws all kinds of things at us. And sometimes, even as Christians, we are wondering, where is God in our situation? I don't know if you cross Pastor Kamkan's mind. I know he's, a, a, he's my colleague, a senior colleague. Or Sister Violet, if you cross her mind. Where was God, or where is God in all of this? And God understands. I was grown up in a, in a society where you couldn't question God. If you see my head is born, there's a few slaps of God from questioning God. I'm a questioning person. Where is God in all of this? And that's actually what Mary was saying. My Lord, if you were here, things would have been different. But you know, Jesus turned up three days late. And his reason was he wanted to show the glory of God even in such a dire situation. Amen. Amen. He came and he raised Lazarus from the dead. He came and they were saying to him, why are you bothering to go to the grave? The man is already smelling. He's been dead for days. Jesus was not deterred by their comments. He went straight to the tomb. And he called Lazarus, Lazarus, come out. And the man walked out of the tomb. This is not a fallacy. It's not just a story. It is a fact. Lazarus came out 
alive and well. And Jesus later told him, listen, I did this so that the glory and the power of God could be manifested and understood. If we understand death in the way Jesus understands it, we can see that out of death can come some good. I've seen families who were broken for years and years, and someone in the family died, and because they tried to understand the meaning of death, it brought them together, taught them a lesson. We have a saying, I'm from the Caribbean, and we have a saying that you never know what you have until you lose it. I don't know if you say that here or yeah. So sometimes that shows us the importance, but that time it might be too late when we recognize the importance of somebody who is not with us anymore. But well, thanks be to God. I want to say to us that God loves us no less when we are past. Paul says in Romans, there's nothing in heaven on earth, not even death can separate us from that love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And in chapter 14, he brings it in close. He said, For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. And Paul spent a lot of his ministry trying to, to get us to understand that. I want to say to Sister Viable, Pastor Conkan and the family, that Eric is in no less a fortunate position than we are because he is past. As a matter of fact, if the Bible is understood and the truth is known, he is in a better position. You don't have to worry about his counts and tax tomorrow. You don't have to worry about insuring his car. No hospital visits. He don't even have to worry about what they did to Morris yesterday. That's not his business. He has gone on now. He has more important things to, to think about. He is resting peacefully in the arms of his creator. Amen. What better place to be? You know, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm a bit mad, but when I think about death as a Christian person, I get excited. I worry about other people's death. I never want to worry about my death. Because I know, and I believe what Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, that there is coming a day when the trump of God shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we who are alive and remain will be caught up with them to meet God in the air. And he said, comfort one another with these words. Death can never be the end of God's creation. Death is a transition or transitionary process whereby we have to pass. Paul said flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. This mortal cannot go to the place where there is immortality. This perishable must put on the imperishable if I am to live in the kingdom, the new Jerusalem of Almighty God. And that's what Eric has done. He has passed from this life of the perishable to the life of the imperishable. He has ceased to be a mere mortal. He's on his way to immortality. All we have to do is to wish him well. Pray that his soul continue to rest in eternal peace. And for us who are alive and remain to learn from his example. Sometimes we can be a bit selfish, you know. And when I say we is a big we can include myself. We have our parents, our family members, and we see they are sick and they're suffering. And we cry while they're suffering, but we want to hold on to them still. You know what I mean? We don't want them to go, because we love them so much. And it never once dawned in our mind that probably it's best for them to be taken out of that pain and that suffering and be at peace with their God. 
It's hard for us to come to terms with that. But let us understand that those we love, God loves them best. I never end a funeral sermon without saying this. It gets me into trouble all the time, but I have to say, every time I do a funeral, I wonder two things. One, if the person in the coffin was given that rare opportunity to come and talk to us now, what would the person say? And I always believe they would say, the first thing they would say, and I hear that Eric is a man who likes to wind people up. He would look at us and laugh and say, Mommy, Daddy, my brothers, my sister, that is not as bad as you all think. I believe that. Away from pain and suffering. And the other thing, I'm sure that he would say, if I had a second chance, I would to live my life all over again. There are certain things I would have done differently. And having reflected on that, I always ask the question or make the comment. Let us try our best to live for Christ. You know why? We do not know which one of us is next. This is the part that gets me into trouble. I said it one time and a man looked at me after the service and he said, Reverend, you said something in the service today and I didn't like it. And the bad thing about it, when you said it, you looked straight into my eyes. <laughs> I didn't even know the man was in the service. But I had to say it. We don't know which one of us is next. And there was a man who listened to the conversation, an elderly man, and came up to me and he said, Reverend, you don't know me. I left home before you were born, but you are my cousin, and we had a long chat. And the next time I entered that church in a matter of weeks was to do his funeral. We don't know which one is next. We go to bed all happy tonight. Which one of us are assured that we're going to wake tomorrow morning? But you know, my brothers and sisters, we don't have to be scared. If we have entrusted our lives to Jesus Christ, if we are living in accordance to what God requires and purpose for us, we have nothing to fear. We pray that Eric would journey well, that he would rest in peace and rise in glory. And I, 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 I like what the Rastafarians say. They say rest in peace and rise in power. But he's not going to rise to no pain no doctor appointments. He's going to rise in the power of the God he knows. And let us hold on to that sister Vida. I know Pastor Kam Kam and the children, I know the rest of the family members, you are grieving today. And there's nothing wrong with that. Because the part I left out is that when Jesus heard that his friend Lazarus had died, Jesus in his humanity showed his emotion. And we have the shortest verse in the Bible. You know what it is? Jesus, Jesus wept. Two words. Two very powerful words. Jesus showed his emotion. So people come to feel and they say, I'm embarrassed, you know, because I cried so much in the service. I'm embarrassed so much. Jesus was the embarrassed when he cried. He shows that we're human. It shows that we, 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 are, we have loving connections with each other. Let us express our emotion. That is one of the ways that we can therapeutically help ourselves by expressing our emotions. But beyond the emotions, let us know that God is still the God of the throne. That God is still able. And that one day there will be a reunion when we will meet Eric again. And I believe that we will be talking about all that we're talking here today. May God bless his soul. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, Lord God, we thank you for your presence, your power, and your love that has sustained us. 
We thank you for our memories of Eric. We thank you, O oh God, that you have blessed us with him, his presence, and his life. And now that you have seen it fit to recall him to yourself, we pray that his soul would rest in eternal peace. But Father God, we want to pray for the family at this time. The family for whom the emotions are wrong, their feelings are all over the place. We ask, so oh God, that by the power of the Holy Spirit that you would console them, that you would strengthen their faith and help them to understand that this is not the end. Father God, we pray that you will continue to be their light in this time of darkness. Not just for today, not just for this week or this month, but even for the years ahead. We thank you, O oh God, that you will be there for them. The assurance that you will be there for them. Every time they think about every creature, we will be continually thinking about it. Every time the emotions become so and raw, that Father God, we thank you that they can look to you and you will bring that consolation in you. Father God, continue to strengthen them. Continue to guide them, continue to protect them. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We will sing or offer to our next sing and the family of Kaide agree that an offering be taken. We ask you to give generously for the work of God in this in this place. And the hymn, the ushers will come around as we sing. And the hymn is, Jesus keep me near the cross.
Lord bless us and keep us. May he make his face to shine upon us. May he lift up the light of his countenance upon us and grant us in peace. And may the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Somebody asked the funeral director. You can just be seated until the coffin of the family in the afternoon and we thank God that you are okay and we thank God that he gave you the ability and the enablement to be present I look at the church and it is full and our family want to say a big thank you to all of you for gracing this occasion we are very grateful as we live here we will be Eric will have eternal rest at East Linton Cemetery. But please, I'm sorry I have to make this announcement that Eric's wishes is that it is purely family meeting. And so the burial or the cemetery business is purely private and it is family only, please. Don't be upset. We want to honor that wish of his. So the next announcement is that the funeral service or the wake, as the youth would want me to say, is at the service center. Service center, please. I am very bad at direction, so ask your friend and your colleague, they will direct you there. Service center. Uh, on, the, on, 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 on our program, we have it at starting at 6 p.m. But please, please, you can start going there at 1 o'clock, going. Uh, we've made provision, and Eric wouldn't mind. We've made provision for food and drinks over there. I saw that there is light refreshment. I want to add more that it is not light, it is heavy. Because every food that you would desire or you want to eat is there. Because we thought that many people would be present here and we thought that the house would not be able to contain everybody. That is why we decided that we arranged for people to be there early so that they can have some drinks and they can have some food to eat. So please, your food, your drinks are service center and you can be there around from 1 p.m. They will serve you. God bless you for coming. And I believe that you will honor our Eric's wish that the cemetery business is purely family matter, private, and I hope you wouldn't mind. God bless you all for coming. And it shall be well with you. Amen. Amen.
What, is mom coming as well? No, I'm looking at that.
Thank you. 